Uh, sorry for the background noise. Uh, I have a professional film studio in my house, so I hope you don't mind me uh, having some background noise. Uh, basically, your goal as a breeder is to love your dogs, raise your dogs, give them the best life possible, uh, provide them an outlet for their energy, their needs, uh, give them a home environment to grow up in and give them a lot of love and attention. Diet is very important for your animal. Having a healthy gut diet is extremely important. Getting proper veterinary care is very important. Giving the puppies you raise the best start in life is very important. Doing a lot of handling and a lot of socialization and a lot of environmental exposure. All of these things are very important. So while in these videos I focused on the mechanics of lion breeding and inbreeding, the most important thing you need to do is love your dogs and take care of your dogs. And if you are trying to develop a breed or a lion, um, that's all very good. Uh, it's not quick. How long does it take to develop a lion in a dog breed? Well, about six to eight years to develop a lion. And to develop a breed uh, will take about 20 years. Why this time frame? Well, because in an existing breed, let's say you created a litter, which is your F1 generation. Now, if you're ethical, you're going to do OFA hip x-rays at your dogs first. OFA stands for the Orthopedic Foundation of Animals, for those who don't know. Or the A stamp in Germany is the equivalent. So your dog has to be at least two years old before he can get OFA hip x-rays. Now, once the dog has good hips and you see the result is good, there's no guarantee that if you breed an OFA good dog to another OFA good dog or normal, that you're going to have perfect hips. You might have a bad hip here and there. But the odds are in your favor, so to speak, not against you. Anyhow, so your first litter will be at two years of old that you breed them. You'll keep a females off of your litter, and then you wait for that female from your first litter to become two years old. And then that female, which is a daughter of this female, she will be two years old before she's bred, and she's OFA hip certified. Then you keep a female off of this dog and it's another two years before you can breed this female. So in, um, in reality this is at least a six year process. Two plus two plus two, six year process, at, at, at a minimum. Now that includes training the dogs, hopefully you title your dogs, and, and you see what they're about. Now, you're through training, you know what your dog is about. I'm not a world-class trainer. I don't compete in the uh, WSV Nationals or the Bundesprogen. Uh, I train well enough to know what my dog is about through training. I can see what kind of pressure they can take or not take. I can see what temperament characteristics. If you don't work your dogs, you don't know what they're about. Uh, you have to work your dogs especially in the sport of Schutzhund, and that sport also exerts uh, artificial selection pressure on your breed. Dog sports have a lot to do with genetics, especially in the working breeds. So if you don't test your dogs through some venue to act as a yardstick, how do you know your dog is good enough for breeding? Now Schutzhund was developed for the German Shepherd, so you should try to test your dog in that venue. At the very least, you should try to do AKC obedience if you can do Schutzhund. But you should test your dogs prior to breeding them and you should not have kennel blindness breeding any dog to any dog because you love the animals. Uh, you can love your animal but it may not be a breed worthy animal for breeding purposes. You shouldn't have kennel blindness and you should have open eyes on what you're producing and what this dog offers the next generation of dogs 
in what you're producing. Um, it takes longer to develop a new breed because a new breed is usually developed by combining breeds uh, which already exist and you have to make sure they breed true. A combination I see happen often these days is the Shepherd Malinois cross. Uh, the Shepherd settles down the Malinois to some degree but the healthier orthopedics of the Malinois and the athleticism helps the Shepherd. Um, I don't know if that will ever become a breed. Right now it's a mix. There's no concentrated breeding program in the country as a whole to make a new breed. But these crosses happen but they're not a breed yet. So that's my point. To be a breed somebody has to agree to form a breed or somebody has to become the steward of the breed. Um, anyhow, if you like this content, um, genetics, training, uh, obedience, um, the ability to understand animals. I have more than 20 years experience with dogs. I've raised many dogs. I'm an old guy. I'm in my 50s. And so I've been around a lot of dogs in my life, both myself and in clubs I've belonged to. I've seen dogs of different temperaments being worked. I see the subtlety in the difference of temperament tied to genetics. It takes a while to understand different types of German Shepherds and the subtlety of that breeding and how it comes out in the training of the animal. It's not something you see in day one. It takes time to develop an eye for it. Anyhow, I hope you subscribe to this channel. We're trying to grow this channel. Uh, we can bring you more content like this. If you have any comments, suggestions on what topics you'd like to see discussed, leave it in the comments below. You might find it interesting that we can grow our channel based on your input. Please click like, subscribe. Thank you very much.